Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we have a really awesome entrepreneur that's a special guest. And the reason he's a special guest is because he is succeeding immensely with wholesale bundles on Amazon. And I thought this would be a great opportunity for you to hear someone who's doing this actively and consistently and profitably on Amazon as we speak. And please look forward to the follow-up of this. I am going to do an unboxing video with um, the Snack Hut. So we have here today, Mark Davis is the founder of thesnackhut.com which is the name of his brand and his company for Wholesale Bundle. So we are super excited to have Mark on here. He has over 10 years of liquidation experience, brick and mortar experience, private label, wholesale, retail arbitrage, all the things. So we are going to dig in to talk about Mark. But first, if you guys are not connected in our Facebook group, a Facebook group not like the others, some that you can come and ask specific questions about wholesale and bundling, arbitrage, and just succeeding on Amazon, go to Mommy Income dot com forward slash join us with the code word snack hut that is this week's code word snack hut and in that with that code word you will get into our facebook group where you can ask questions and learn from other sellers learn about wholesale bundling ask questions about these things so that you can move your business forward and find the success like people like mark are finding online with wholesale bundle system and with um just specifically with this box so mommyincome.com slash join us the code word is snack hut make sure you join the facebook group that's where all the cool kids kids hang out. That's where it's fun. That's where you can get specific answers to move on with your life and your business and get back to what you really want to do. So without further ado, we are going to welcome Mark to the show. Welcome Mark to the show. I'm so glad that you're here. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So Mark, tell us a little bit about you. I know I gave you this wonderful long intro, but we want to hear it straight from you. How, how did you um, get into liquidation? Because we talked about you having 10 plus years of liquidation experience. How did that kind of start? Liquidation started, um, we had a, a company where we live. We used to live in uh, Louisville. And there was a business there called Pick a Pallet, <clears throat> where you could go in and pick out a customer returns pallet, and then you turn around and sell it however you want. So uh, we started with one pallet, and uh, we flipped that and turned it into two, then turned that into four, turned that into 10, and then turned that into a truckload. Um, and then for five years, we did uh, customer return truckloads. Um, where, where were you liquidating these items? Were these a multiple platforms or a single platform or to wholesalers? Like, how was that process? Well, it was actually multiple platforms. Um, we did a lot on Facebook Marketplace starting out. Um, and then of course, eBay. Um, and then we had 14 peddlers mall booths uh, across the city. Um, so we would you know, go to the warehouse, clean up the product, get it priced and all that. And then twice a week, we'd go and restock all of the booths and uh, collect the money up that way. And then of course, eBay built up over time as well. Um, and while we were doing that, um, I joined a Facebook group called uh, FBA Rockstars. And I was there that I first learned about Amazon. And I learned the hard way that you, you can't or you're not supposed to sell liquidated product on Amazon. Um, yeah, that's kind of a tough lesson sometimes when you get first into Amazon. If you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a huge learning curve. But uh uh, we just, we branched out from there. I uh, learned about RA and OA and uh, we dabbled with that a little bit. Uh, we actually- a little bit more about your experience with RA and OA. Cause I think, you know, coming from a liquidation perspective and trying Amazon and then realizing this isn't going to work for all yeah. the, the, what we consider now obvious reasons of, you know, just defective items or, you know, things that are less than new customer experience, things like that. So moving in from like a liquidation perspective, what got you interested in doing even RA or OA to begin with, considering it seemed like you had experience with maybe wholesale or some other avenues? What was attractive yeah. about that? Well, when I when I first started doing Amazon, even with the liquidation before I found that was that was a no no, um, it was the volume of sales compared to any other platform. Uh, I've been on eBay for gosh, 15, 20 years, mm -hmm. you know, and and eBay's a decent platform. the two so 
when I joined that FEA Rockstars group, that it was a R8 back then was a, a big thing. I don't know if it was just up and coming or what, but um, I met a guy named uh, Chaz and uh, he did a lot with RA and started telling me how you could go to just like Target and Walmart and wherever and buy this. I never imagined back then that, that you know, you could flip stuff from a retail store onto Amazon. Uh, so I started dabbling into it. Of course, then you have to learn about sales rank. You have to learn how to read a Keepa chart. You have to uh, know how to use BrickSeek and all this other stuff. So it was a whole learning process. Um, and we started doing toys and some other general merchandise items that, that you know, we go to Myers and Walmart and uh, Target, even though Target doesn't like it, and a few other stores. And we were flipping that stuff. And uh, of course, I wanted to get more into wholesale. Um, so I started looking more into wholesale, but I noticed that, you know, the bigger name brands, you've got 30, 40, 50 people on a listing. Uh, and that's when I learned about um, sharing the buy box and how difficult that can be and, and uh, all that good stuff. So uh, I, I, we tried to figure out, well, what can we do? And, and of course, then we looked into OA because it was easier, you know, not having to spend the gas money and all that. And I uh, took an entire course on tactical arbitrage and and how to operate that. And everything was going well. We scaled that business up to a six-figure business uh, within a year. Um, but man, RA and OA has a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of travel time, a lot of scanning, uh, a lot of research. Um, and then I started to learn a little bit more about reverse wholesaling. Yeah, talk to um, us about that because I think reverse wholesale is a really new concept for a lot of our listeners. So let's let's discuss that and what what that actually is and what that process looks like. Okay, uh, so reverse wholesale is basically you're going to ignore the big guys. Uh, you want to find uh, manufacturers of products that they're not necessarily private label. Um, so there's going to be multiple sellers on the listing, more than likely, usually three or more, but they're going to be a lesser known brand. Um, reaching out to these brands. And what I used to do is I actually used to do a screen recording um, on Amazon showing their product and comparing it to their competitor's product and showing them where they were coming up short, um, where their products weren't performing as well, um, or where other sellers were coming in and tanking the prices, which you know overall can, can hurt their brand viability. Um, and by doing that, by reaching out to them, giving them some data, you know, and, and letting them know that their products aren't performing very well on Amazon, uh, we were able to secure a few exclusivity contracts where we would agree to maintain their Amazon listing uh, if they gave us the exclusive right to sell their brand on Amazon. Um, a lot of manufacturers, they're good at what they do. Uh, they're good at developing products and they're good at marketing their products. They are terrible at Amazon. I find that to be most people that are product developers or brands or things like that. They're very passionate about what they do and about their products and getting them out there. And, you know, they could, you, you see them on Shark Tank, right? You see those people kind of doing those things. The reality is, is it like, they don't know the, how big of a beast Amazon is. Everyone wants to be there. They really do deep down. And if they're not there, and the reason they say they don't want to be there, it's mostly fear, fear of the unknown, fear of, do I need a whole separate team to run my Amazon store? And my, my answer is, well, it depends on how many products you have. But the answer is also yes. Like if you are, we are experts at Amazon, you're experts at product development, let's meet together and make this thing work, right? So I totally agree with you there. Is it, It's a lot easier to secure um, exclusivities or um, specific brand or ASIN or product management for someone that doesn't understand Amazon, but still wants their presence there. So I love that that's kind of called like reverse wholesale is that you're picking on uh, yeah. listings on Amazon that could be improved. And then you're showing the wholesaler, the distributor, the manufacturer, the owner um, that they could be performing better and getting so many sales. And, you know, I love that tactic of being able to secure that. So um, thanks for explaining that process. Yeah. Yeah. It turns out to be a win-win situation. I mean, you get to help the brand owner out and expand their presence on Amazon and increase their sales and protect their brand. And they can still focus on what they're good at. Uh, so reverse wholesale did well for us, but again, it's, it's a lot of work. It's, it's, uh, it's constant, researching and trying to find these brands and uh there's there's software out there to help you do it but 
this, you know as well as I do, software starts to add up after a while. Um, and uh, from there, we decided to, I started doing more research into a uh, private label because I was, you know, dealing with this reverse wholesale with these manufacturers. And I was like, man, I want to get in on what they're doing, you know, make the product and, and I'm better at Amazon than they are. So I can use Amazon as a launching pad. Uh, since I don't have the capital that they have to launch a brand traditionally, which is a lot more expensive to do. Um, so we started doing more research into private label and uh, then, of course, started learning a little more about wholesale bundling, um, you know, putting some products together and putting them under a different brand name. And uh, we did that. And our first three products did great for the first two weeks and then they tanked. Um, we sent in. I, don't know, I want to say 15 units of each one. Um, and within the first week, we were sold out. It mm -hmm. took us another week to get the product in, get it put together and sent back in. And we could never gain traction on those listings again. Yeah, uh, that's the dreaded sellout that we all kind of worry about in the beginning, right? We want to start small and we want to start conservative because we don't have proof of concept, but then we get proof of concept and then we sell out and then our listings like, oh, this one. Yes. Amazon does not like to feature listings that are continually out of stock. Now, unfortunately for them, we are, there are ways to boost our listings and get them back up there and, and, and yeah. do some things like that. But that is an unfortunate reality that Amazon sees out of stock and they don't know when stock's coming back in. So they push you to the bottom of the barrel because you can't make sales on something that doesn't have inventory. So it's definitely one of those penalty markers that we have when, when we have to launch something that then sells out. That's like a, it's a good, but a problem to have that you then need to, to troubleshoot there. So, so tell us a little bit more. So you've got wholesale and then you started looking into bundling. What was attractive about bundling? Was it just something different or did what, potential did you see to even make you try going from wholesale to um, considering a bundle? The biggest potential that I saw, and, I, and I, I'm a firm believer in it today, is I don't like to share the buy box. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing wholesale or retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, whatever you're doing, uh, of course, you're checking Keepa, you're checking for the rank, but then you also have to look at what other people are selling on there as well, how many people are on the listing. Uh, and then to remain relevant and to keep the buy box, you need to have a repricer to constantly reprice your product if you want to sell in, in volume. Um, and it, it just gets tedious after a while because you might find a really good product uh, via RA or OA that is uh, replenishable and you start selling this product and, and you're making a good profit on it. And then five, 10, 15 people jump on the listing and they're new. They don't know what they're doing on Amazon. They tank the price, the ROI drops, uh, then it gets to where you just can't make any real money on it anymore. So it just doesn't seem worthwhile. Uh, so you have to move on to the next one. So I got tired of that and I wanted to have a listing that it's, it's mine. Nobody else can jump on it. And that's where bundling caught my attention because, you know, there's, there's different ways to go about protecting your listing with bundling, whether it be under a brand name or, or even a generic uh, name. Our first bundle was a generic, but we included a uh, like a little chip clip that had our company name on it. So unless somebody wanted to go out and buy a bunch of chip clips with my company name on it, then they couldn't sell the product I was selling, um, which, which was great because, you know, when you look at private label, private label is expensive. Um, you know, if, if you don't have 10 to $15,000 set aside to launch a product, you, you probably shouldn't even waste your time. Um, and let's talk about time for a minute, right? Because that's the most yeah. precious commodity. I mean, I don't care if you have $10 million in the bank. Do you have six to 12 months to tie up said capital to wait and see and launch your product? Because let's be honest, most right now, I wish it weren't this way, but it is just a reality that most manufacturing and things are done outside of the U.S., you know, yes. just that we have to outsource manufacturing. It's just one of those things that is our current here and now. And so that also comes with time and travel expense as far as getting things sea freight or air freight is double or triple the cost, depending on what you're selling. And we're going to have to deal with importing. We're going to have to deal with um, things like, you know, 
just all the different rigmarole. I mean, both of us have, have definitely imported before, so we know what comes along with that with customs bonds and things being held up and inspections. And am I going to get the right product at the right time in the right port? And when they say 15 days, they really mean 45. And when they say 45, <laughs> they really mean 60. And oh, but wait, there's more. So right. realistically speaking, we're talking 10 to $15,000 and 12 months of back and forth between samples, between creation, between getting it, verifying it, all the things to import is going to take approximately that time. And that's really the question of the day, right? We cannot stop a business to be like, let's explore this you know, expensive and time consuming idea while we still have bills to pay. So right. that's one of the things I love about wholesale bundles is really that it's poor man's private label. And I've been saying that for a really long time. It's a way to get the benefits of a private label style product, owning the buy box, owning a brand, owning these things, but without 12 months and 15 grand, you know? So yeah. it's kind of like that, that, um, in between say, so was that, is that been your, was that your experience at first of thinking, how do I own the buy box, but without, you know, reinventing the wheel and having to spend so much time and money getting it off the ground? Exactly. And when, I mean, when I first, you know, decided that I wanted to own the buy box and I started looking into private label and, um, of course, I had imported in the past and had the same challenges and issues. Um, and then, of course, uh, it was it was just in the last couple of years that we decided to start doing this. So, you know, you have COVID to contend with. You've got the ports that are shut down and now China ports are shut down again. Uh, our ports are starting to clean up, but now those are backing up worse than ever. Uh, and then you, you still run that risk of uh, running out of stock. What if I don't order enough product and then I got to wait? Uh, another, you know, 45 to 60 days to get my restock in. And uh, I apologize for all the dings there in the background. Somebody's That's all right. We're all busy, popular people, aren't we? <laughs> um, so, yeah, you know, we, we wanted to find a way to not have to contend with, with all of that, um, you know, and, and that not knowing when it's coming, if customs is going to clear it and whatnot. So, uh, we just started to try to think outside the box and we thought, you know, why not take the principles that we've learned with private labeling? In other words, how to validate a product, how to compile a master keyword list, how to estimate what your first month of sales is going to be and whatnot, and apply that to wholesale bundling to where I can source domestically because you know, yeah, I mean, you, you can always source domestically even for private label, but the fact of the matter is if something's made in the USA, it's going to cost two to three times as much as if it's made in China. Uh, personally, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to pay $10 for a $2 product just to have it made in the USA, but you can find products that are manufactured and made in the USA that you can bundle, and there's still room in there to make money. Uh, there's still room, in fact, just as much as there is with, with traditional private label. Um, you know, when we're looking at private label products, when we're doing our initial research, we want 125% ROI before everything, because you're still going to have advertising and, and everything else that has to come out. And uh, we decided to do the same thing with the, with the bundling format. Um, and, and that's where Snack Hut came from. Um, we have three other brands that are traditional private label. Uh, and then Snack Hut is kind of like our first bundled private label. Y'all, Snack Hut. This is what <laughs> this is. This is why Mark is here to begin with, is because with his knowledge and experience and coupling that with wholesale bundles and a specific system and process, this is what you get. This is a snack hut and stay tuned. Um, make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel because the unboxing of this wonderful, lovely snack hut kit is um, going to be available alongside of this podcast as well. So make sure if you haven't seen the YouTube video that you go and check that out there because I do a little bit of an unboxing of this because I believe this is, this is the exact representation of a perfect wholesale bundle in my opinion you know there's all kinds of different ones you can make this one has to do with snacks and candy and things like that but it's that concept of owning the buy box owning a brand and then having no competitors no one's coming to snack hut and saying you know i'm tanking the price and i'm selling this because it's your private label brand yet 
the thing, the only thing that you're manufacturing is your packaging. That's it. Okay. And you guys, this is even more brilliant. I know for our podcast listeners, I can't see it. So go watch the YouTube video so you can see this. This is not even a custom printed box. It is a sleeve that is around the box. And then it was, I mean, you can't see the plastic on it now, but then it was shrink wrap plastic. So we're not spending a ton of money on the actual box. It is the the sleeve that goes around it and then some shrink wrap that goes on top of that. So you guys have really got this concept down. And the whole idea is, does this take 12 months and $15,000 to launch? The answer is no, no, right? So give us your experience a little bit about how did you decide the, the snack hut option, that idea was going to be a, a good concept and to move through with it? Well, when we started looking uh, into private label, one of the things we do is oh, I'm constantly doing data research on different products and I've probably got, I, I don't know, uh, 300 other products that, that I could launch. Uh, but as we were going through it, um, we were trying to decide what would be easy and quick to bundle. Um, that wouldn't take uh, a whole lot of effort, but would stand apart from what other people are doing. Um, and last year we had decided that, um, you know, I, I follow a guy on uh, a comedian. He's a local comedian. His name's Emery King. And he gets these monthly subscription boxes of candies and snacks from around the world. And he always does an unboxing with his kids and me and my wife and my, my older son, we love watching them. They're just really funny. And uh, that's where we were kind of like, okay, well, let's look into this. And uh, then, you know, we just started crunching the numbers, finding out what would fit. And um, it sounds easy, but if it wasn't for my wife, it wouldn't have happened because she's an organizational queen and I'm not. And uh, she was able to take uh, a list from a wholesale supplier that has, you know, 10,000 types of candy on it and break it up into tiers based on price, based on how many units we need to order. She worked her, her mind magic and, uh, you know, you put the first order in and, uh, you know, and then of course we had to think, what are we going to put them in? And we decided with boxes instead of bags. Uh, Which I the think custom, was brilliant because yeah. You know, when they're changing so many hands, you have people packing the boxes, you have the boxes then being packaged, then then shrink wrapped, then sent to Amazon, then they put it on the shelf, then the customer gets There's a lot of touch points in any Amazon FBA business, regardless. There's going yes. to be many touch points. So uh, I'm a big advocate for if things can ever be damaged, crunched, or even you think it could get damaged, boxes are always the way to go. But, right, boxes, printed custom boxes are expensive, sometimes Very. more than we're making on a bundle they're saying we want five bucks a box for this really nice roll and tuck shipping protective box just mm -hmm. the box of cardboard without being printed is costly yeah yeah so and, and then amazon also they're not always very good about shipping stuff in boxes um you know we used to do a lot with potato chips and you'd think it would be common sense that a bag of chips should go in a box but they were shipping them in poly mailers well, and because their their robots were programmed to say, okay, this weighs this amount, so we're going to choose this because it doesn't have the weight that needs a bag. Like it literally are not humans making these right. decisions, and so they have to reprogram the bots to not put a three ounce bag of chips into a three ounce poly mailer and then ship it off. To yeah, you. It causes right. a lot of complaints from customers when they get those mashed up chips, you know. Yes, so, for sure. but we decided with the box, and then like you said, I looked into custom printed boxes and. It's insane how much they cost. Uh, we have another product that we actually have custom printed boxes made for it. Um, it's a much smaller box, so it, it doesn't cost as much. But once we saw how expensive they were, um, we decided to, at first we had thought about maybe a label. Um, and then we thought that kind of looked generic. So we came up with the idea for the, for the sleeves to go around the box. And um, there's several different kinds of sleeves out there. The, the cardboard ones are very expensive. Uh, that one's just a glossy, you know, piece of paper um, that you fold around the box and tape onto it. They were a whole lot cheaper. Uh, so then we just, you know, had our designer put together a design, ordered them, ordered the candy in, uh, put a system together for putting them together, shrink wrapped them and sent them in. 
do y'all do it all in-house or do you have a prep facility, a warehouse? Like what is your, what is your system and process look like for that? Yeah, I have a, well, we have a had, uh, we just recently sold, we had a retail store for our liquidation business. Uh, we just sold that off three weeks ago, but we kept the warehouse on the backside of it. Um, and the warehouse is where our entire production takes place. Um, we've got two employees now that that's all they do is make boxes and, and wrap them and box them and get them ready to go in. So yeah, it's all done in house. Yeah, that's great. And for those of you guys that don't want to take something that on, of course, we always recommend a prep center. That's how I do my prep center because I didn't, you know, some you had access, you already had the facility that you needed to kind of incorporate your old with your new. And some people, you know, they're in New York City apartments that they, you know, they have 500 square feet, but they still want to do wholesale bundles. That is where prep centers come in. There's tons of prep centers out there. Of course, you guys know my recommended ones. You can listen to our ads and, and look at those things as well. But um, honestly, that takes that process out of there. So if anyone's thinking, oh my gosh, I would love to do that, but I don't want to sit there and pack boxes. Don't worry. There are places and facilities for that so that you don't ever have to touch that. Your ideas are the most important thing. So you, you've saved money with the sleeve. You saved money without printing the boxes. What are other ways that you have made? Because let's be honest, we know with grocery products, or those that don't know, we're going to inform you, grocery products have very, very minimal margins. So wholesale bundling lends itself to, to grocery items, specifically, number one, they're replenishable. When people run out, they want to buy more. People are addicted to certain foods, and they are just like, I have to have this, that, or the other. So number one, the brilliance of a replenishable bundle that can be sold over and over to the same customer, that is like the holy grail, right? But then there's also the grocery margins and we all know that grocery margins are so so slim um, and so get creating a box a a wholesale bundle with grocery items is the perfect match made in heaven because it gets rid of this lower price margin that you have to deal with with grocery and it also is replenishable people can buy it over and over so snacking obviously is a great concept for bringing wholesale bundles to the table, but it's not without challenge. So, you know, let's talk about some of the challenges because we all know wholesale bundles is not just sunshines and rainbows. There are, there's still what we've said over and over in this episode. It's a lot of work. This is a lot of work. That's a lot of work. Guess what? Business is a lot of work. <laughs> right. We haven't discovered right. that we've been jumping ship. We all have, right? We've been in this 20 plus years, right? So we're both going on this path going, okay, well, this is this, but this is a lot of work. Then this is a lot of work. This is a lot of work. So it's really more refining the type of work you want to do and how, I know this word is not like a real word, but like how outsourceable is the processes that you're doing? And so that's a lot more. So you can be doing what you want to do while other people are doing what they're good and what they need to do to make the whole concept right. So I think it's a good progression to say this is a lot of work and we're looking at ways to reduce the workload and yet still have the same profit. So how has Wholesale Bundles changed your business in that regard? Well, it's it's changed it a lot. We are, uh, we've always been advocates of, you know, when we make a transition, we're not afraid to lose money uh, to test the waters. Um, so when we started to make the transition, um, from RA, like we've dropped all RA and OA. Uh, we've dropped, uh, today was our last wholesale shipment from our biggest supplier. Uh, so we've dropped them. Um, there were several other wholesale suppliers that we just dropped them as well because we want to focus on nothing but uh, the private labeling of these products. And, and we're using this as a, I mean, don't get me wrong, we'll always have the boxes. Um, you know, we've got 10 or 11 more in the works. Um, but we're also going to move into products that, that we don't have to handle, you know, uh, snack products that just have our brand on them and we can sell those on Amazon as well. Um, but through the transition, uh, it's, you know, less payroll hours. Um, there's not as much prep to do because when we order, you know, we're ordering enough to make a thousand units of one particular box, which will take the girls usually two or three days of, you know, two or three, eight hour days and, and they're done. Um, and then they can take the next couple of days off if they want to. So it saved us on payroll um, time, uh, the time that it is saved from not having to tweak your repricers, constantly 
you know, check your replin levels, placing orders with 10 different suppliers, you know, uh, by being able to consolidate down to primarily one supplier um, for this product currently, uh, it's, it's saved a lot of time, which time equates to money. So time is money. You know what? That is, that is a, so you're saying that the wholesale bundles as a whole, which I love what you said at first, like you weren't afraid to lose money to get this started. So I'm going to challenge those words and basically just say, you were not afraid to invest into a concept. So Correct. you did not actually lose money in the beginning. If it's still going, then we mm -hmm. have to look at what did you invest and what, of course, that's why I always tell people there's a chart that I use in one of my um, slideshow presentations about this is like, okay, when we first did a prep center, we took a dip in revenue and in profits. But then the, the long term effects of that were all of a sudden because we had more time to not prep and to actually look for profitable products and tweak our listings and make sure that we are, you know, getting the most profit out of what we've created that gave us the time to make more money. So it's a short dip of investment to where, yes, it goes negative for a time, but then right. six months from then you, you see that double, triple, or dare I say more return on your investment. So you didn't lose money. You were just willing to invest in something that you believed in, in time would get you there. And proof of concept exists, right? Because we are holding, I'm holding a snack box. Yeah. So I love that. The snack hut box, um, just for you guys that know to find these, they're on Amazon, the snack hut, also the snack They have many, many boxes there for you to work. And of course, if you want to know what's in one of these special ones, I'm going to be doing the unboxing. So watch that video. Um, but all over all the concept, that is really what we wanted to round out here is the idea that this Actually, if you invest a little bit of time and money in the beginning, yes. the learning curve, the the people complain. These are just pain points that people are always talking about. You're in the Facebook group, so you know you hear it. Well, where do you buy? You know, boxes are so expensive, or this is this, and like the, it's front loaded investment. You're gonna do all the work up front, but now today, let's talk about snack cuts today because you already alluded to this and save you so much time. So now when you think about, oh my gosh, this box is getting ready to sell out or we're looking at inventory levels, it's reordering, making sure your girls are showing up on time to be able to process those. And that's all, you're not reinventing the wheel. And if you are, it's because you have extra time because this one's already profitable. So exactly. how many hours do you feel like it's saved now that you've got your processes in, in place for ordering and bundling and shipping and all that? I mean, if, could you put a time number on that of like how much time have you actually saved by doing wholesale bundles? Oh, wow. Uh, a week, hours per week, maybe. I mean, we don't work a traditional schedule, so, you know, Not anymore. Uh, exactly. <laughs> um, and I mean, we're always working regardless, you know, working on the next best thing, but, mm -hmm. but production wise in general, ordering, packaging, everything. Uh, well, I can tell you my payroll has gone from uh, having two employees working 75 plus hours a week uh, combined. Uh, they're now working maybe 20, 22 hours a week each. So about 40, 44 That's hours combined. Almost half. Almost half, almost yeah. Um, half. And as far as my time, it is freed up. Everything that I've done, every step that we've taken was to free up more time for more education. Um, you know, starting with Amazon, not knowing anything, having to learn Seller Central, having to learn Keepa, having to learn how the Amazon algorithm works and so forth, moving into reverse wholesale, learning how to do all that, then moving into uh, wholesale bundling and moving into private label. All of them have their own roadmap that you have to follow. And each one of them that I've taken has, has freed up a little more time for me to learn that next roadmap. Um, and, you know, by far the, the private label roadmap, you know, following it uh, is just, it, it's extremely lucrative in the end because one bundle leads to another bundle, to another bundle, to a private label product, to another product, to another bundle. And it just compounds, just like compounding interest. It just keeps compounding and saving time and earning more money. So 
you guys, I'm going to ask this question because Mark allows me to, but can you just give us like, I mean, because everyone knows my story, right? And it's like the eye roll, cue the guru, right? Which I hope that I'm not in that category. I'm just a seller trying to help other people like not have to make all the expensive mistakes that I made over time right. and developing the system that finally worked for me. But like numbers wise, can, can you just give us like, what's your revenue from last year? seven figures on amazon yeah so so seven figures so people have asked me that before because they're like well that's great for you but what about us smaller people and i'm like the reality is the smaller people when doing these things see because i think what you just said was missed because people focus on these other numbers and things like that but what was actually missed was mark said he freed up time so that he could learn the next step to up the business. So that's what you're doing. You're freeing up time in this process so that you can learn. Why? Because when you learn more, you earn more. It's that's just right. a natural process. As if you free up five hours a week, you can learn something in three of those hours, implement it in two, and now you, you, you're gonna make, that's gonna make you so much more money. It's exponential growth for your bottom line because when you free up time to do something you're gonna learn how to do that's gonna make you more money, it's just exponential. So thank you for, you, you skimmed by that really quickly, but yeah. I wanted it to be the concept that people really focus on is that we're honest here, right? Yes, these things are a lot of work, especially in the beginning when we have no idea what we're doing. But well, I think it's a, a key element for people starting out, patience. Yes. Got to have patience. You can't expect to jump into Amazon, create a bundle and make $10,000 in the next week, you know, yeah. make long-term goals, not, not such short-term goals and be patient and take your time and, and really learn and learn from others, which is like you said, I'm no guru at all. Uh, I'm not a teacher or anything like that, but I had a lot of people that helped me along the way. Uh, and when I first started looking into wholesale bundling, of course, I came across your group and I learned a lot just from, you know, scrolling the posts in that group and watching some of your videos and tying those and relating those to some of the private label practices that we use. Um, but taking the time to learn, listen to other people and being patient and honestly try to enjoy the journey. Don't, don't hate it so much. It's frustrating because you know, as sellers, Amazon doesn't really... They don't really care about us, but that's fine. You know, they give us a, a wonderful opportunity. And uh, too many times I've run across people that are just so impatient. They just quit too soon. Mm -hmm. And they, they quit too soon or they, they, um, <clears throat> I noticed that a lot, or they have so many excuses before they even jump in as to why it's not going to work, yeah. um, rather than exploring the idea that if I do this and this and that, it's that delayed gratification. It's like, if I promised you at the end of this year, you could have a seven figure business and I promised and guaranteed that, but then I showed you the way most people would not go the way. Because exactly. they, they're not going to believe that these, all of these things I have to do are going to equal this. And I'm like, yeah. but this is a guarantee. You know, of course we know we can't guarantee anybody, anybody's anything because it all depends on your own efforts. Right. So all you need, like you said, is the roadmap. You need the roadmap. It's up to you to follow it. It's up to you to navigate the obstacles with things like Facebook groups and videos and training. I mean, training is training is training. You can't expect to know how to do a wholesale bundle if you don't learn how and then actually take action to practice it. Yeah, you know, I'm sure you've had some duds where you thought, oh my gosh, this box is going to do really great or this bundle is going to do really great. And despite all of your efforts, it still ended up in clearance or liquidation. <laughs> yes. Yes. Ended up on the store shelves just to get rid of it. Yeah, exactly. We've all done that. The reality is you have to have the um, the enough risk and enough belief that this process is proven and works, which we've seen that that's my story and your story and hundreds of clients. Right. But yeah. then also the fact that like you have to delay that instant gratification. I would say people are like, oh, my gosh, I you know, it's a get rich quick and I just want to jump in and make 10 grand real quick and get uh -huh. out. And I thought you need a job. You don't need a you don't need a business. <laughs> you need to yeah. be able to invest in the business, in yourself and education and training and in, in action and with product. We're selling products, right? We have to buy inventory. And so um, the, the concept of this getting rich quick and starting from nothing. Yeah, you can. And it's a slow process. And I started from nothing, too. <laughs> it just took 10 years. Um, so the idea there is just having that patience and having, you know, that time is money um, and it will eventually pay you the dividend 
weekends, it doesn't mean it's tomorrow. <laughs> right. I appreciate you sharing that with me because I feel like I say that a lot and people are just like, yeah, but I still want it now. And I'm like, that still doesn't change that you want it. And then it's actually happening. Well, I get it every day. We I have people that I'm, I'm a member in a lot of different groups and, and I try to participate as much as I can. Because like I said, I had a lot of people that gave me free advice along the way. And then of course, I had a lot of people that gave me bad advice along the way. Um, and, and so when I see a question I can answer, I try to answer it. But that's the biggest problem I run across is people just want it to happen overnight. And it's, it's not, no business is successful overnight. Yeah. Uh, so if, you, if you're just patient with it and you follow the process, too many times I've heard people say like, RA is dead. You can't make any money doing retail arbitrage. Well, uh, I have a gentleman in my, one of my mastermind groups that does 15 million a year in revenue and he is strictly 100% RA and has a team of 12 shoppers that travel up and down the East Coast buying his product. So it's not dead. Uh, right. It just it took time to build it. Retail mm -hmm. arbitrage is not dead. As a matter of fact, I often go back to the concept of that and why, like people will say, well, why did you transition from retail arbitrage to wholesale? And it had nothing to do with profits. As a matter of fact, I was extremely profitable and continuing growing. I had to hire help and, you know, I had to mm -hmm. get a partner and things like that because I couldn't keep up with the profit. That wasn't the problem. The problem was I traded, I was, I basically built myself a prison. I was like, okay, yeah. I have this great job and making this great money, except for it's demanding 60 plus hours of what I can, it's not, I'm joking when I say physical labor, but like, let's be real. I am sitting at a computer now looking at product, researching it and sending emails to order product before I was getting in my car and driving, you know, I had a whole map mapped out all day. And from, you know, 8 AM until 6 PM, I was out shopping and bringing stuff in all weather, mind you. So 90 to hundred degrees in the summertime and mm -hmm. then freezing cold, zero sub sub temperatures and uh, winter here in lovely Michigan, um, all year round, rain or shine, it was my job to go out and find product to sell. And then maybe that product is never available to me again. It just right. started to not make any logical sense. I thought I have a lot of I have a lot more money than I used to with this particular job, but I didn't have time to spend any of it because I was too busy going out and pounding the pavement. So I thought there's got to be a better way. And I think that's kind of the progressions we've all been through here is saying the better way was wholesale at first. And then yeah. it was like, well, these margins in this competition and there's 25 other people selling this and I'm going to make a dollar 50 and I have to sell a thousand of these and this isn't going to work either. So the private label I checked into at that moment and it was $15,000 in 12 months. And I thought I can't go out of business for a year while I'm trying to chase this down. And I don't even have that kind of scratch. So now what? So it was the wholesale bundles that really, it's a bridge, the gap. It's a hybrid of yes. wholesale plus private label. You get all the benefits of that brand ownership and brand registry and all the owned of all the buy box. I never worry about the buy box ever. Now I just don't, no. it's not a thing because it's like, this is my brand. These are my products. This is what I'm bringing to the table. And I worry about other things. Like, did they lose my inventory? How much of this did they check in and not check in or, you know, things like that. So it really doesn't, it changes the workload in a sense that now, last week I was in Florida, I did a speaking engagement and then had three days off to go to the beach. Meanwhile, everything's running smoothly. I'm not out there trying to find my next product at, at the store. You know, if you think about that, it's actually ludicrous. I mean, it works and we make money off of it, but like yeah. Target doesn't go over to Best Buy and say, hey, you got any TVs we can buy and mark up? I mean, let's, it, it's kind of funny that way. So we, we will always have a black market. We will always have retail arbitrage in one form or another, and it is very profitable. But when it comes to retirement, we have to think about that, right? Because I don't know very many, and I've talked with acquisition companies. I've had my business evaluated many times. And what they've told me about retail arbitrage too, is that 
it's really, it's a tough sell if you want to sell your business at some point, because it's not sustainable. It's not predictable. They want some sustainable supply chains. And, and you're saying you, you trained 12 people to go out there and shop at other retail stores for your inventory. <laughs> they laugh you out mm -hmm. the door um, yes. because they, they're understanding that this is a concept. They're just like, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just go to the source and order those products the way traditional places do them? They don't understand. And it's too risk, too risky for them to even purchase it, even if you make $10 million a year, you know? Yeah. And so if the owner, the purchaser, the, the CEO um, has to go out and buy product on the streets, doesn't seem like a very good business concept to a lot of people, even if it's profitable. I mean, um, selling drugs is profitable too. <laughs> um, so I, I kind of look at that like, okay, there's profit in a lot of things, but is this a, a sustainable business right. model. And that's what I was always looking for because I realized retail arbitrage is more like building myself into a prison and it yeah. didn't seem sustainable and or scalable. Now we've seen people scale it, but the sustainability, the, the, the acquisition idea, eventually we all want to retire, right? I don't want to do this till I'm 85. I, I'll do something, but it's not probably not going to be this. So thinking also about how would I like to exit out of this and can this operation run without me um, is right. always a good a concept to do. Yeah, and that's normally the, the outlook on any like, like bundling or private label is building that brand up to where you can get an aggregator to buy your brand off and then take that what they pay you, invest half of it and take the other half and start another brand do it all over again and sell the brand again yeah so and that's that's kind of where we're at with uh with the snack cup brand we re are using amazon primarily as a launching pad um you know because of course we want to build up the website and the subscription side of it when it comes out and the other products uh, and build the brand up over time to where it's not just on amazon it's also outside of amazon which raises the value so that when the time comes we can go to an aggregator and present it and sell it off to them Absolutely. And the other thing too, is that if you're building a sustainable brand that looks and appears nice too, the other part of that is retail distribution. And a lot of people don't consider that when they're talking about Amazon, because yes, we are an online society, but it's still, I think this was recent when Amazon was challenged with the Amazon's a monopoly kind of thing. And they came back with the numbers and they like, actually online sales are still only a very small portion of the retail industry. Most are is still brick and mortar, even as right. big as Amazon is and how many billions of dollars in sales and customers that they have. We still all on probably most, I guess this is an assumption, but most of us ha have to go to a store at some point within a week or two or whenever to get some things because Amazon is not going to send me a bag of apples. <laughs> you know no. what I mean? Or something <laughs> like, so eventually they're trying to do that, right? They want to take over the retail world. We know that, but the reality is it's still a very small portion. So there's also an option to go to brick and mortar stores with a brand that you have spent so much time curating. I mean, I could see this as like a mystery box at Target that you would want to buy to be like, oh, that's a great gift for yes. a, maybe a kid or something going to a birthday party. They, they're going to get toys. They're going to get that. But like, who's going to bring something cool like this? A mystery box full of candy. Like I'm bringing that to every birthday party I go to from now on. That's the new gift of the day. Um, well, that's the next box too. It's, it comes out next week. The happy birthday mystery box. Oh my God. I'm so excited about that. Yeah, that's going to be it. I'm going to just from now on, my daughter has to go to a birthday party. I'm like, oh, I got a great gift for boy or girl, anybody. We're just going to buy this birthday candy box. And then kids these days too, they enjoy the experience. My daughter was like, can I do the unboxing video? I was like, well, we can only do it once because we got one box, but um, I want to put it on my YouTube channel. She's like, well, I'll do it second after you open it. I'll pretend to do another one because she just wants to do it. So yeah. it's not just that. It's a whole brand. It's a whole concept that then people are not thinking about the end game. And I think that's what's great about wholesale bundles too, is if you're doing it correctly and you're creating your brand and you're creating a, a decent box to put it in and things like that, retail is actually an option to go yes. to retail stores and say, hey, is your sales team willing to carry this at a few select stores and see how it does? And if it does, we create a relationship. You could be nationwide, you could be global and not just with Amazon. So it opens so many doors and opportunities to launch on Amazon and then 
you know, traditionally it was launch and retail and then maybe in other places. And now we've kind of reversed that to where, hey, we have a good presence on Amazon. They can check you out. They can say, yeah, that looks great. Let's put them in our stores as well. So there's always those opportunities there. Well, Mark, thank you so much for being here and, and sharing mm -hmm. all of your knowledge and all of your, your steps that you've taken and just having this great conversation. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing. And I appreciate you being here with me no and sharing your knowledge. Again, friends, while you're listening mommyincome.com forward slash join us your code word this week is snack hut because you want to be in the facebook group that's where mark is he's answering questions if you have questions for him you can tag him in the facebook group he's a wealth of knowledge he um, will share and give you you know right and good information i know some people will answer questions that were like well <laughs> but we've got a lot of experts in there, a lot of people that have been doing this a really long time that they're happy to share their experiences and give you a little bit of advice. Mark also knows a ton about some PPC and some launch strategy there. Uh, he will be guesting in our guest hosting a training in our uh, Amazon Files Hub community in June. So if you're not in the Hub community, that is our paid membership group for only Wholesale Bundle students. So we would love to have you in there if you're a Wholesale Bundle student. It is that advanced learning that we're talking about the advanced learning that you spend the hour now learning and now you're making thousands because you've implemented a new concept that puts money in your pocket that is what learning does and so of course we have the hub for extensive advanced learners for wholesale bundles so we'd love to have uh, you guys join us in the hub with that mark is going to be our guest next month and we really appreciate your expertise in there as well i i'm like ready with my red pen like ready to take all my notes for your the things you're going to show us there because they don't have to be crazy complicated right they just have to be right. simple and something we can implement immediately and then make changes to to help serve us so i'm really looking forward to um, the training you're bringing and you guys, where, where can everybody find your, your snack huts and all that kind of stuff um, so that everyone can go buy one of these amazing boxes? Uh, the easiest way is the website, the snack Um on Amazon. Of course, you'd have to search specific keywords to, to find it, you know, like uh, we have a sour candy box. We have a nostalgic candy box. We have a warheads box. We've got the happy birthday mystery box coming. So, but yeah, the snack hut.net. Uh, is about the easiest way to find the products. But if you buy it and find it from Amazon, make sure you use all those keywords. And then, of course, our favorite thing is to leave a review. Leave a review when you buy stuff from Amazon. You guys are sellers. You know how important reviews are, especially if anyone was mean and left a bad one for no apparent reason. How many people have gotten that? Me, for oh, sure. Yeah. So leave the good reviews, buy a snack hut box and see if you, if you're even curious of like, what does a wholesale bundle look like? What is the concept? How does it look? It looks awesome. It looks professional and it looks like you're just not reinventing the wheel. They created a brand. They put some pretty cool stuff, uh, candy in a box. They created this lovely sleeve and wholesale bundles. That's it's, it's not, uh, I want to say it's not easy, but it's simple. Is that, is that a good explanation of it? It's not rocket science. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not difficult to do, but there is a process that takes yes. some time to learn and to figure out. But once you do that, it's, it's just kind of, you can almost put it on autopilot. You think of the concept, order some stuff, and then, you know, you keep doing it. So thank you, Mark, for coming and for being here, you guys. Uh, thank you for listening to this week's uh, episode of the Amazon Files. We will see you same time, same place next week. And I hope you have an awesome week.